is a, a really nice turnout. Uh, hopefully you've had a good event so far. Um, I'm Itai. I'm the founder and CEO of Sakoda. It's the booth that has the dogs and these t-shirts, so um, you've probably seen us. Um, I'm going to be talking about this uh, new concept that we're really excited about at Sakoda and just in general talking to a lot of other people in data called metadata monitoring. Um, the uh, concept, I think, uh, comes at a really interesting time for where we're at as sort of like a data function, uh, and I think it's something that we believe we should all be thinking about a little bit more. But before I get there, uh, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. Uh, how did we get here? Uh, what is kind of metadata? What is metadata monitoring? What are the benefits of this thing and how we can actually go about implementing it? Um, so hopefully it gives you some good things to think about after this, uh, this presentation and uh, yeah, we'll get started. So this is a, a pretty famous uh, overview of what the market landscape looked like in 2012. Uh, I think we've all seen it at some presentation or another at some point. Uh, come on in, that's okay. Uh, don't, don't feel bad. There's still seats too if you want. Um, this market landscape of where we were back in 2012 is significantly different than where we are today. I think the one commonality across where we were back then and where we are today is the, <laughs> the segmentation across all these different categories that really, really do overlap with one another and do a lot of the same stuff. We're seeing, and I'm sure you all have as you've walked around kind of the vendor booths today and yesterday, you know, there's, there's a lot of common concepts here around observability, around lineage, around documentation, around how we do dashboarding. And you know, to, to market map it like this, I think creates a little bit of uh, chaos because you know, maybe some person does some other thing that they're not totally in. But it also creates chaos because in a particular category that we see on here, all of a sudden people wanna jump in and start competing for that category. So we're seeing a lot of different tools doing a lot of the same things. One of the things that's really important to think about with metadata monitoring that we'll come back to is that in order to monitor kind of the metadata of our data stacks, which are becoming increasingly more complex, we as data teams have to start thinking about how we can get an understanding of you know, this landscape that we're implementing into our kind of workflows. And that's becoming really difficult to do when you consider the amount of permutations that exists across different companies' data stacks. We have the privilege of working with a bunch of different companies as they implement their data stacks. And I can, I can tell you, like, for the most part, we really don't see a lot of commonalities across the board in terms of tools because you know, it might be a different source system, it might be you know, a different warehousing tool. There's always a unique edge case just given the amount of different systems that have to play with one another. And the, the other things that make kind of this idea of monitoring metadata really important is where we're at, not just on a tools perspective, but also where we're at from you know, an actual kind of data stack consumption perspective. We're seeing more tools, more teams start to shift, or more vendors start to shift over to consumption-based pricing. I think if everything remained flat forever, we probably wouldn't have to think about our efficiency as much. But just like software engineering teams have to think about the uh, amount of AWS credits that they are you know, consuming each month, we need to start thinking about the you know, co cost of Snowflake. We need to start thinking about the cost of DBT and some of the other tools as well in the stack. The other thing that you may have all heard across different talks that are going on at, you know, whether it's this conference or other conferences, is that data teams generally struggle with the idea of how do we validate ROI for our team. And when you know, we shift towards consumption-based pricing, when we're seeing tools prol proliferate the way they do, the idea of you know, validating your ROI as a data team becomes all the most more important, which is obviously a really big topic for, for a lot of us. The other thing that's, that's interesting is we work with a lot of data teams that actually end up having more data tools in their stack than people actually working on those tools. There's maybe like 10 or 11 tools managed by the data team. 
and maybe like five or six data engineers and data analysts. So that just becomes a really, really difficult stack to manage. And when you think about you know, tool proliferation and the amount of different places that people have to go to for information, that obviously you know, creates a lot of complexity. And then the last thing is that there's an increased amount of data. When you, know, you think about data outside of just what we're seeing in you know, uh, the tools that we work with, we're seeing a lot of uh, SaaS tools that different teams are buying, and the amount of data that we have to work with is only increasing, which puts increased pressure on our costs. It, pu it puts increased pressure on the amount of data that we're processing, and understanding kind of how this data is moving through our system is only the more important. And so taking a step back, this is obviously a problem. We're creating more data. It's costing us more. We have to think about how we're efficient, all of this stuff. I think you know, generally people agree with this. Taking a step back, before we introduce kind of what metadata monitoring is, it's pretty good to understand what metadata is. Uh, and although this might seem like a pretty trivial concept, I think it's a pretty important one to just dive into. So on a practical level, we think there's four types of metadata that data teams should be thinking about. And when you're thinking about metadata, uh, and when you're thinking about this slide in particular, uh, I think metadata in this kind of scenario I like to think about it as like a micro metadata asset. I don't know if any of you have taken economics in you know, school. There's a ma macro and a micro economics class. Um, this is what you would learn in like EC 101. The metadata monitoring we would do in EC 102 in the metadata in the macro part. So on, on the, the micro level, we have schemas, we have you know, basic definitions, we have the uh, asset information. And this is almost like a hierarchy of needs of metadata, right? When we think about technical definitional metadata, most of it is pretty accessible to us and it's pretty baseline. I think, you know, generally speaking, most teams know where to find this technical metadata. As I go through these examples, I think one exercise that's, that's pretty helpful is to think about, you know, where this exists for your stack. Because a lot of times I think what we find is that as you go kind of up the hierarchy or uh, to the right here, um, it becomes harder and harder to find this information. So the second one is kind of operational metadata. So this is not just where the metadata is today, but how it's actually processed, uh, what is you know, the uh, lineage across this metadata, how it's, you know, is it an efficient kind of uh, lineage process? The third one is uh, descriptive. So this is very specific to your business. Uh, anything associated to PII or tags or classifications, ownership or teams, this is stuff that usually a data catalog is brought in to start bringing, you know, surfacing and bringing value to. And then the third or the fourth one is that social component, which I still feel like a lot of teams are short on. This would highlight kind of the usage across these different assets, ownership, of course, but also who should I talk to about specific uh, pieces of information. Again, modern cataloging tools do allow us to do a lot of this micro level work. And this, uh, I don't think, should be you know, new concepts to anyone. This is just an understanding of metadata. The, the second piece of what we're introducing is what is monitoring. So, you know, we've, we've probably talked to or used some sort of data quality tool. There's a bunch of different, uh, you know, anomaly detection mechanisms that we can use, whether it's something like DBT tests, whether it's great expectations, whether it's a metadata monitoring tool like Monte Carlo, Metaplane, Big Eye. All of them are able to do this monitoring, but similar to the idea of metadata, this is on a micro level. So we'll see the micro level impact of you know, completeness on a table. We'll see the micro level impact of a table and how integrity or how trustworthy that table is. I don't think there's a lot of value going into these different tests, but if you're not using a data quality tool, I think it is a good starting point for a lot of this stuff. Similarly, if you're not using some sort of metadata capturing tool, it's a good starting point. But the more interesting thing is this idea of metadata monitoring. So this is EC102. This is the next kind of piece of what we think uh, teams should be thinking about as they're thinking about growing out their data stack. And in fact, I really think that teams for a long time have struggled with the idea of what is metadata versus what is monitoring and how do I make sense or drive value from this uh, kind of, from these two separate tools. Metadata monitoring, in our opinion, kind of falls right in between, but looks at the macro level impact of all of your data stack. 
So in an ideal case scenario, you as a data team should be able to not only know what you know, the cost of certain queries are, what the resource volume is over time, what the efficiency of certain pipelines is, but also set thresholds, monitors, and you know, get alerts when those things are out of whack so that you can take action about them and make sure that you know, going back to that first point about costs or efficiency, you're staying within the boundaries of what, what you guys are, are setting for yourselves. And what's interesting about this, I think, is that when we take kind of a 50,000 foot view of our data stack as opposed to like a 100 or 50 foot view of our data stack, I think we're able to solve a lot of the problems that exist for data teams today that have been created by the proliferation of tools, the proliferation of data, and some of the processes that we've put in place. Metadata, honestly, is such a useful backbone, but we're so early in understanding how we can use it as a team to drive efficiency. But in, in general, what it should help teams do is tame some of the data sprawl that you are seeing. I'm sure there's a lot of unused data, a lot of assets that are in Snowflake, a lot of models that are not necessarily that efficient. Uh, that data sprawl should be reduced with something like a metadata monitoring tool. Of course, you know, less dark data, stuff that you guys aren't using or other people aren't using. And when we're thinking about data, you know, as it says on the screen, I think the thing to note is that this doesn't only exist in the warehouse. This exists in BI, this exists in Fivetran, this exists across the entire stack. And really there's efficiencies that you know, we can drive around cutting down some of our processes uh, to drive you know, higher quality data and reduce our costs overall. And in other uh, areas, I think what we found interesting is that you know, across the board, other teams are using tools like this all the time. Uh, marketing uses tools like SEMrush, they use Google Analytics to understand how their actual product, their, the website is converting, is it working? Product, customer support and sales do the same thing, whether it's looking at deal cycle times on Salesforce, whether it's looking at product analytics and mix panel, all of these different tools really provide us the insight into the actual work that we're doing. But what's funny is as data teams, we should be you know, the most data-driven team. In fact, I think you, know, you would think this would be kind of the first thing we'd put in. But you know, there's, there's kind of like a cobbler shoe syndrome where you know, I think data teams have the dirtiest shoes uh, in the company. So, so this is pretty common. It's not, not unique by any means. What we're introducing is not crazy. And I think what's great is over the past year, we've seen uh, some really great tools and open source models to start implementing point solutions for metadata monitoring. Uh, one of those tools I think is here, Select. It does snowflake cost monitoring and is fantastic at showing you exactly what's driving the costs of different queries. There's also other tools like Element which does this for DBT specifically, so looking at your models and the efficiency of those different models as well as showing you a lineage graph. In addition to this, there's other open source models, like there's a DBT Snowflake package that's pretty great at monitoring the cost that DBT is attributing to Snowflake. And there's individual tools like Fivetran. You can go in and you can see the cost of Fivetran. But it's still difficult. But why is it difficult? Because there's so many different permutations of how the data that can impact something like compute increasing or cost increasing can actually work. And so implementing this at scale is actually quite difficult because we need a central source of truth. So to start with something like metadata monitoring, if this is something that you wanted to implement at your company, the, the first step we think is implementing a lineage model that does, doesn't just look at DBT, Snowflake, and maybe your BI tool, but looking at your entire data stack. So everything from you know, potentially your sources, your ETL, uh, if you have any data quality tools, bringing that into the tool as well, and showing the entire backbone of your data stack. Without a complete lineage model of everything that's going on in your data stack, I think we're still going to be operating a little bit blindly, uh, trying to increase efficiency. And hopefully this is a tool that you can use not just on a macro level, but you can use also on a micro level to start 
uh, analyzing kind of uh, changes or impact analysis to stuff that you're going to make. So I think that is kind of a first place to start. And what we've started seeing from lineage tools as well is they're starting to take in some concepts from you know great expectations by layering on um, you know DBT tests or great expectations into those lineage graphs so that you can actually uh, take action when you're looking at the lineage graph and make sure that you're not you know losing any important information there. But when you're actually implementing something something like this after uh, you know creating that lineage graph. There's uh, sort of two uh, primary components to thinking about implementing metadata monitoring. The first is understanding your state metadata. So this is the metadata uh, of the entire data stack. Uh, if you wanted to see kind of your query volume over time, your resource usage over time, your uh, kind of table dependency over time, that would be your state metadata. And over time, the state metadata should just give you uh, some information about what is the state of my data stack at a certain given point. Is it efficient? Are certain resources growing more than they should? Uh, and are they you know, uh, available for people? And then the second one is really related to process metadata. So this is when you know, we're able to inter integrate something like your YAML files or your great expectation tests into this overall model to see not only the operation within that single tool, but also the uh, operation with it as it interacts with other tools in your stack, so the process alongside it. There's other types of monitors that we think are quite useful on the metadata side. Of course, costs is a big one. But there's also us uh, kind of measuring the amount of time that we're actually uh, using to either process different you know, uh, queries, how much time we're computing on certain things, and uh, also how much time is available, the data is actually available for us. There's quality, of course, both on a macro level and a micro level. On a macro level, data quality could mean you know, the impact of a certain change that you're making in Fivetran and how long it actually took to resolve that change uh, that impacted a core dashboard. Um, or something a little bit more uh, specific to a tool, like the quality or documentation percentage within uh, something like Snowflake uh, that you have. And then, of course, operations. So when we're looking at these tools, uh, as a data team, uh, part of the reason we look at them is so that as a data team we can become a little bit more efficient. As software teams, we have tools that measure our cycle times and measure the speed to actually resolve certain issues. As data teams, tools that measure metadata monitoring can give us the same insight into our efficiency so that hopefully we can be a little bit more lean, efficient, uh, whatever have you, as we grow. And what's nice is that even though this is a really complex problem, uh, you know, we're trying to make some progress on it. Uh, I think you know, it's, it's a very large, complex idea of getting to a place where we have uh, both monitors, quality, and an entire data stack represented in one place. Uh, but with Sakoda, we do uh, have a system that actually allows you to set thresholds to see uh, how your data stack is performing over time so that as you're uh, integrating more tools into Sakoda, uh, you can hopefully monitor how those tools are performing and whether you know, they're driving up costs for you, whether they're efficient, and uh, whether your data team is actually um, operating you know, uh, in its best capacity. Outside of that, I think you know, for us, uh, this is a, a relatively early concept, uh, one that we're seeing you know, very, very good point solutions on but I think we're pretty far away from having a standardized either method for categorizing data, metadata or a standardized tool that's closed source or open source to do metadata monitoring well. I think as we make progress into what is the standard stack, this will become easier. So as less tools exist on that market map over time, uh, but also as we, as data people start thinking about other ways that we could potentially introduce metadata monitoring into our workflows. So yeah, we think it is a really important concept, something that we should all be thinking about pretty early on. Uh, given you know, where we're at with our data stacks and what's kind of coming down the pipeline, we think it's something that we should you know, be implementing. And really, you know, on, top, on top of just you know, providing us some 
safeguards and some peace of mind uh, analysis on top of our metadata is in its very, very early days, and there's a lot that we can do with it. And so that's it for now. Um, you know, for those that haven't seen, we still have our dogs later in the afternoon today, and if you want to chat about metadata, monitoring, what Sakota does, how we think about this stuff or how you think about this stuff today, you can come by our booth. You can also pet some puppies if you want, and uh, we'll be around. Thanks. Ooh.